Welcome back to Sailor March Madness. As I said before, there is a lot to cover when we're talking about Sailor Moon. With 5 seasons and 18 manga volumes, there is just too much to cover in just one review. So, that's why we're dedicating the month of March to this epic heroine. Now let's continue this dedication with my all-time favorite season, Sailor Moon R. Part 1. Well, there's two plot points in this season, so I think it's best to separate them for now. The aftermath of Barrel led to the girls and Mamoru to lose their memories. Just when you thought Usagi was maturing as a Sailor Scout, she forgets everything that's happened. Figures! The first part of the season was just about two aliens named An and Al, or An and Alan in America, invading Earth to survive. Luna and Artemis don't want to bring back the Sailor Scouts so they can live their lives normally, but when these baddies called Cardians become too powerful to handle, they have no choice. The Sailor Scouts are back with their past memories and along the way develop some new powers to handle the Cardians better. With her memories back, Usagi wants to be with Mamoru again, but he doesn't remember anything that happened. At the same time, when the Scouts are in danger, they are rescued by the Tuxedo Mask wannabe, the Moonlight Knight. Hmm, who could you be? Skipping some filler episodes, An and Al try to feed Usagi to the Makaiju, or Demon Tree, but the tree starts to attack back. It turns out the tree was a tree of life used to take care of An and Al's people before they started fighting over who should have the tree for themselves. Their world is destroyed, and the tree flies around space in search of a new home to take care of the surviving children. By the time they find Earth, An and Al are the only ones alive to take care of the tree. Sailor Moon is able to save the tree and give An and Al more strength to travel space again to find a new home. After they're gone, the Moonlight Knight appears and reveals that he is Mamoru's lost memories. Okay, that's a twist. Mamoru couldn't remember who he was or transform because a part of his subconscious separated from him and became the Moonlight Knight. Again, it's anime, don't argue. He then fuses back into Mamoru, causing his powers, memories, and love for Usagi to return. Aww, isn't that sweet? This was only the first quarter of the season, and I'm not sure if it had a point. An and Al were not even in the manga to begin with, so this is what you call filler. I guess they needed to find a way for them to remember who they were before Chibi Usa landed on them. It makes sense and all, but most of us here would like some manga consistency here. It's anime tradition, however, to put in some filler episodes here and there. It stretches out the anime, connecting you from point A to point B. Whenever they need more ideas, they added new characters that have nothing to do with the manga whatsoever. They did it then, and they still do it now. It also needs to be pointed out that in every season of Sailor Moon, Usagi will get a new set of powers, giving her a new transformation sequence. In the first season, it was Moon Prism Power. In this season, her mother, Queen Serenity, presents her with the Imperial Silver Crystal for her to use permanently, and transform using Moon Crystal Power. It's just another way for each season to be special. Other than the romantic reunion between Usagi and Mamoru, I'm not sure if I liked anything from this part of the season. I mean, these episodes aren't bad, but I would want to skip them in order to get to the important part of the season. And we'll get right on that in our next review, Sailor Moon R Part 2. Hope you guys get to stick around for that one. In the meantime, you can look us up on Facebook for more updates on our projects and such. Just go to our Facebook page and like us. If you wish to support our production by purchasing our merchandise, just go to www.cafepress.com slash Anime America Podcast. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to Anime America!